So tonight I want us to place a demand on the oil that will stand on this altar. We place a demand that God will use him to impact our lives, shift us to the levels that God wants us to be. So in the next 60 seconds, just begin just to place a demand as he comes to the altar. Precious Holy Spirit, this meeting is for you. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Listen, listen. I want to say a prayer to the Lord over you. I pray that anybody who is hungry this night, anyone who is thirsty, may the Holy Ghost quench your hunger. May the Holy Ghost supply bread and wine this night. May the Holy Ghost give you something that will leave you perpetually a sign and a wonder. One thing I can guarantee you, today's encounter for those who can lay hold on the ordinations that God have for us this night, you will run on the strength of the food you will eat this night for the rest of your life. People who have a long journey ahead of them, those that the call of God for their life requires that they will have to, you know, go on very long voyage. There are things spirits must do for them and one of it is that they must give them food when Elijah was going to embark on the mission to seek the face of Adonai an angel needed to come to him wake him up from the slumber of humanity and tell him eat eat you know why the journey ahead of you is far those among us here who are going far you are the ones that God created this meeting for it's, it's, it's not for those who are not going far I'm speaking to those who have a yearning on their inside that there are chapters of my destiny yet to unfold there are pages of my life that men have not seen yet I'm speaking to those that there is an undertone voice something telling them that God wants to use you mightily you cannot go on that voyage until you eat and this night is a banquet of spirits they are laying tables they are inviting you come and eat it's only for hungry men if you are not hungry carry your bible and leave it's not for you it's for those who know that i have destiny to manifest a nation is waiting for my rising you know that all all i'm seeing now is just a pinch there is a lot of seasons ahead of me ah. i'm speaking to young men young women who know that there is nothing about them now that truly can reveal their true ordination so you are looking small now but you are not small though your beginning be small your latter end shall be greatly increased you are one of the salvation for the nations the person who is not going to the nation you wait until we reach the time where we prophesy on the resources of people you can shout amen then but those who know that there is something inside them that nation will drink from those who are springs of water to quench the thirst of generation on a meeting like this you will be desperate i share something with you very quickly and then we pray in the market of the spirit the currency for transaction is hunger you will not your, your currency that you use in this country cannot buy anything in the world of spirits. If you like, have it in millions. You can't secure any transaction. Ah, pounds and dollars is useless there. The currency for transaction in the world of spirit is hunger. I want to share something with you so that we pray. Ah, in the book of John, you will find Jesus dialoguing with the Samaritan woman. And Jesus was trying to convince her to desire the water that he wants to give to her and so he began that communication by establishing a point of you know a common ground and he started telling her give me water to drink and we all knew that Jesus didn't want to take any water 
because he was trying to introduce the water of life to her but while Jesus was speaking the woman was busy putting up all kinds of defensive word what has Samaritan got to do with you that was the first name she called Jesus a Jew he went ahead to open some chapters of her life that is not disclosed to any man so the name changed from Jew to prophets I sense that you are a prophet of God but that was not even enough and Jesus was done convincing her with all the long talk he says the water that I shall give to you shall be in you a well springing unto everlasting life say a well come on Boswana shout a well listen to me why was it a well because God needed to take time to convince a person who is not hungry the, the conversation went back and forth back and forth and the best God can achieve on the platform of that encounter is a well but if you are a Bible student on the last day of the feast Jesus stood in front of this temple and cried out who is it that tests let him come out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water listen 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 who is it that tests let him come and drink drink of what the same water that he told the Samaritan woman I want to give to you but when he gave the Samaritan woman the best that that water can do in her is a well but Jesus says anybody that is thirsty by himself who is it that tests anybody that is thirsty when you drink the fact that there was test in you he says from your own belly is not a well your own is rivers of living water listen listen wait what is the difference between a well and a river a well and a river are both water supplies they are both forms of water supplies a well is just for a few houses you will be a man of God quite all right but the sphere of your impact is only for your family and a, a handful of people because all that the deposit of God in your life can amount to is a well but there is a brother somewhere who is thirsty and saying Lord I will not live here until I touch you what he will become after this conference is not a well he will become a river listen what is the difference between a well and a river a river can feed a territory water a well will only fill a, a, a household a well is a water body that only provides for a, a few a few set of need but a river can minister to a whole territory the measure of the anointing you leave this conference with can either be a well or a river guess what the choice is yours I want you to pray one prayer Lord fill me with test and hunger that's the only criteria to buy things from the world of spirit. Those who will become rivers after this conference. Out of your belly. Rivers. Rivers of living water will now begin to flow. And so your prayer is one. Lord, fill me with hunger. Give me genuine hunger for you. Can you pray wherever you are right now? Give me hunger. 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 Keep me always hungry for you stare something on my inside that will make me look for you for the rest of my life do something to me that will make me start searching for you as a deer pants for water holy ghost give me hunger holy ghost give me thirst I'm not satisfied. I'm not satisfied. Holy Ghost, another measure. More, more, more. Why do you pray for five minutes and you are tired? The diagnosis is that you are not hungry. You are not hungry. You need spiritual hunger. Why do you study the Bible for 30 minutes and you are tired? You need hunger. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be filled. Blessed are those.
those who hunger and thirst. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst. The Holy Ghost is consuming people with hunger now. He's consuming people with hunger. He's intoxicating them with hunger. Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost. Father, a voice that the Lord has given to this landscape and beyond to cause for accuracy, to cause for alignment, and ultimately to be a pivotal part of his revival move in your land. Please help me celebrate the angel over this house, God's servant, Apostle Francis Sakufiwa. Please celebrate him. Come on, Botswana, celebrate, celebrate grace. Thank you, sir. I also want to celebrate God's choice vessel, Apostle Timotheus Adelaja. He is here seated. Please celebrate him. All the, all the pastors, all the pastors, all the ministers here present who have taken time out of their very busy schedules to come be a part of this very very epochal meeting i celebrate you please can we just put a hand our round of applause for them amen and then last but not the least most importantly celebrate yourselves amen for the sake of those who were not around I will use the next five minutes to do a recap and then we build going forward. Yesterday I began to share primarily from the book of Genesis and also the book of Psalms. Those were the two books that our discourse, you know, dwelt primarily around. And from Psalms, I read from Psalm 115 verse 16. And the Bible said in Psalm 115 verse 16 that the heavens, even the heavens, belongs to the Lord but the earth has he given to the sons of men so I also shared in Genesis chapter 1 verse 1 that the Bible says in the beginning God created the heaven and the earth and I went further to establish that when God created the heaven and the earth God took sovereign control over the affairs of the heavens and then he willed the earth to man so he gave man control over the earth and I established yesterday also you know passively that the control of man over the earth uh, is territorial in nature and so they began to break the realm of his dominion first over the fish of the sea over the bird of the air and over every creeping thing that creeped on the land so the first level of dominion man must exercise his dominion rights over is the fish of the sea and I went ahead to establish why do they give emphasis to the water as the first place that man's dominion must start from 
I talked about it briefly yesterday and I didn't get the chance to, you know, to establish why these various, you know, um, stratas of dominion are important because it's not really so important as regarding what we want to discuss. I also went ahead, you know, to share with us yesterday that when God willed the earth to man, God rested. And I established why he rested. It was because he had recreated himself. And so God cannot be in the same space with another God and both of them will be working. So daddy God created baby gods and as soon as he was done creating us, he rested and gave us the dominion mandate to continue the work of creation. Till this day, we are still burdened with the responsibility to create. You will find that in the commandment given to us, be fruitful, multiply, replenish. All of these things is not just about, you know, you creating by yourself. The idea is that the capacity to create is willed into every son of God. Every child of God has the capacity to speak and call those things which are not as though they were. Creation is also subjected to your command. When you speak, things can come to pass. The Bible began to give us a little description. Yesterday I took time also briefly to establish that that the Bible gave us a description how God's rule. They rule by decrees and utterance. They speak things first. And so everything is under pressure to bring your word to pass. Unfortunately, I said there was a corruption and a fall from this very hallowed stature that God gave us as gods. And so not too many people live as gods because they never taste the God life till they die. They die like mere men. I shared with us in Psalm 82 verse 6, the Bible says, I say unto you, ye are gods. All of you are children of the most high God. He says, but you die like mere men. And so it's a tragedy in the corridors of the immortals that the people that they thought are governors over this space, they are living like servants. And so the great teacher said, I saw a great wickedness under the sun. Princes are walking on their feet and servants are riding horses. And so the things that are not legal occupants of this space have, you know, taking the authority from man and they began to rule and i showed you in second corinthians chapter 4 verse 4 that the bible says satan the god of this world and so by illegal means he had secured the adamic authority and the dominion of adam cuts across zones because it's first over the fish of the sea the birds of the air and then you will find every creeping thing that creeped upon the earth and so in job chapter 1 in the day when the sons of god were gathered Satan used Adamic authority to still manifest in the courts of heaven, even if he has become Satan, because it is on legal grounds that he accepted the dominion of Adam. The things I want to share is only Romans chapter 6, verse 16, that will show you how Satan touched that dominion. The Bible speaking in Romans 6, 16, it says, Know ye not that to whom you yield yourself, servants to obey, servants you are to who you obey whether to sin unto death or righteousness unto life and so everybody at the end of the day will be obedient it's only a question of who you obeyed man must be obedient the question this night is whose spirit are you obeying ah you don't know what i've told you you are an obedient person it's only a question of who who is your obedience channel to us there is a kingdom that is saluting you and say, we have not seen a servant as faithful as you. Ah. Everybody is obedient. Those who are now, those who are not around rather yesterday, can you now follow us from here? Huh? So we can take flight now. In the light of these things we have shared that a spirit deceived man and snatched his dominion from man and then made man subservient to him so man now became subservient to a spirit that is supposed to be underneath man oh let me show you who the prophecy that Adonai left as one of his last words before he stepped out when he came and saw what was what what has happened he began to give everybody his judgment everybody who played a part in the fall of man when he came to the serpent he says dust you will eat for the rest of your days and on thy belly shall thou go all of these terms are metaphors 
Everybody here knows that snakes don't eat sand. We know that. Amen. Come on, Boswana. Amen. Amen. We know that there is no snake that eats sand. God was not saying, serpent, you are going to feast on dust as in sand. Dust is a metaphor. Dust is communicating a dimension of man. Ah. God formed man. Genesis 2, 7. God formed man from the dust of the ground. When he formed man from that dust, man was already alive. God now used his breath to add another superior life upon biological life so that this superior spiritual life will give man authority over hormonal demand. The way a goat just He's just living for how he feels. Anything, anything his hormone tells him to do, he does. Man would have been living like that if God did not put a superior life to rule over the biological life. This is why God never bred upon goats, but goats are alive. God never bred upon birds, but birds are alive. God did not breathe upon fishes, but fishes are alive. When the Bible says God formed man from the dust of the earth, look at your Bible, there was a comma. The command there means there was a process that has been achieved at this level. He already has the same life that a chicken has, that a dog has. But God doesn't want man to operate from that lifestyle. And so he gave him an extra life. So that if your body says do this, there's another life that can tell your body, calm down. When man fell, it was that extra life that gives him capacity to rule the will of his body. It was that life he lost. So he began to live for how he feels. Adonai left a very wonderful prophecy. He looked at the serpent. He says, because you have done this, you are cursed above the cattle of the field, above the birds of the air. He says to him, dust you will eat for the rest of your days. What does it mean? God said, you have brought this man down using that dimension of him called the flesh because it was the flesh that was formed from the dust of the earth. God says, dust you will eat for the rest of your days. He says, I limit you, Satan. I limit you to only interact with man through his flesh. And any day man has power over his flesh, you will have no power over him again. I bring you good news tonight. We are crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, we live. But the life that we now live is no longer us that live. It is Christ that lives through us. The devil will not come through any other place except your flesh. And anybody here who learns how to mortify the flesh, Satan has no power over you again. Guess what God said? He says, number two, on, on thy belly shall thou go. Guess what it means? On thy belly means you will relate with man from a defeated position. Listen, listen. You will relate with man. Have, have you seen people on their belly before? It's a sign of honor to a royal entity. When you come before a king, you prostrate. When you are on your belly, when a spirit subjects you to stay on your belly, it means anytime you come before this creature, worship him. My people perish for lack of knowledge. I told you yesterday, Satan's strongest power is ignorance. He, do, he doesn't want you to know what is your own. And he does not want you to discover who you are. So God said, on his belly, he will go. It means any day any child of God discovers his identity, Satan is under him. You don't know how powerless Satan is until you become real. You know, there are too many fake Christians. One leg is in the world, another leg in God. And so you are lukewarm. You don't know the things that are yours. A double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. Such a man should not expect anything valuable from the Lord. You don't want to grow. That is why you have not touched your inheritance. 
for the heir as long as he is a child does not differ from a servant although he is lord of all you will find out the things you are running from they can run from you too you just need to upgrade you need to upgrade there's somebody here that must upgrade <laughs> you did not enter time correct you fell inside Adam when Adam fell you fell inside him and so they brought the second Adam into time too to be waiting to repair you if you are here you have not met Jesus you are broken and if you have not received Jesus you are like a scientific calculator in the hands of a market woman they are using you to do Maggi plus plus oil and you are capable of doing much more you don't know who you are yet until you meet the second Adam at some point in this teaching I will give another call and it's only for serious people I don't want any emotional person to come out here serious people who know that today is about destiny discovery I know I am more than this when Adam fell all creation fell with him God also made sure that when Jesus prevailed everybody prevailed with Jesus By the power of the Spirit over that brother that the power of God came upon I release grace upon you now I declare the spirit of wisdom and revelation it swallows you from your head to your toe I stretch you from border to border I declare the fire of consecration God is killing the appetites of the flesh now because he wants to deprive Satan of the capacity to rule over man and so the fire of the Holy Ghost will move in the hall. He will touch people now. He will start touching people. And when that encounter starts, it's just a note. It's a signal. Holy Ghost, Holy Ghost, confirm your words with signs and wonders. Begin to touch people and stare. Consecration fire. Consecration fire. Consecration fire. Wherever you are, begin to pray in the Holy Ghost. There is something in your body that is trying to make that you never arise to your true potential in the spirit. There is an infirmity that wants that the things you want to do, you don't see yourself doing. But the things you don't want to do, that is what you see yourself doing. That narrative ends tonight. A spirit arrests you now. Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost. Touch. 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 Please bring them out wherever they are. Touch. Touch. A spirit will overshadow you and you will become another man. A spirit will consume you. You will become another man. Holy Ghost. A spirit will overshadow you. You can't resist him. You can't stop him. You can't ignore him. He's too much for you now. Holy Ghost. Don't let them escape. Don't let them escape. Arrest men. Arrest women this night. There is fire in this hall. There is concentration fire. Concentration fire. Help that lady. Help that lady dear. Please, please, wherever you are, be your brother's keeper. Be your brother's keeper. Just help them where they are. A fire of ordination, ordination, ordination. Who am I, Lord? Who am I? Fire will answer you now. Holy Ghost, touch, touch, touch. Unveil identities.
where you are, hold somebody's hands by your side and begin to blast the tongues. Everything you have not planted in my life, oh God, I uproot it by fire. Every appetite, every yearning, every thing in my flesh, warring against my spiritual consistency, I uproot by fire. Botswana, are you praying? Botswana, are you crying? The Holy Ghost is still touching people. Holy Ghost fire. Holy Ghost fire. Holy Ghost fire. Double measure upon them. I set you on fire. I set your altar on fire. I set your altars on fire. On fire. Consume them. Consume them. declare to me the exact words you were speaking about while you stood here. It is a season of allocation of territories and it is a season of the arising the arising of a new order in the spirit such that has never been seen before. There is, there is a new throne that is being raised in Botswana. None have sat on it before and God wants to give it to people. It's a seat of authority where the whole land becomes subjected to a man's command. I want to flow with the spirit this night. And so, sir, I believe that it is the counsel of the spirit as one of the functionaries that I know God has a strategic mission for in this country. I would like you and God's prophets to Timotheus and Elijah, I want you to lay your hands on these ones and give them inheritance. Everybody here was numbered by the Spirit of God. And so an elder must touch them. When these things happen, whatever, whatever is the complication around your life, the hand of God will bring a new verdict. Bring that lady out there. Don't let her escape this dealing. Bring her. Daddy, please. Ushers, once they lay hands on anybody, you help those people, you carry them, try and take them back, either to the back or to their seats. So we continue. You are mighty on your Mighty on your throne, you are mighty on your throne, mighty on your throne, mighty on your throne, you are mighty on your throne, you are mighty on your throne, mighty on your throne, mighty on your throne. You are mighty on your throne. Ah. Mighty on your throne. 
There are thrones, there are thrones rising in the realm of the spirit. You are mighty, oh Lord. You reign, you reign, you reign. See what he's doing. See what he's doing. He's just choosing to move. He's jealous about the destinies of people. No more, no more would you continue. No more would you continue in captivity. A spirit is jealous for you now. Your lover, your lover, your lover. Your lover is calling your name. Your lover is coming for you. I have found the one whom my soul loveth. lack of order let's not let's not be so emphatic about planning and orderliness and then miss the move of the spirit so please let's try again and see if we can we can take flight small wherever the holy ghost stops us we would pray again you know what jesus is doing he is furnishing people with ordinations some people will get up they will get up from encounters like this and a hunger for righteousness they will try to ignore it it can the voice cannot be quenched again that is how god arrests a territory he begins to arrest men first thank you jesus thank you jesus thank you jesus thank you jesus Thank you, Jesus. There is a set of women that will rise in Botswana. Hear the word of the Lord. Hear the word of the Lord. Listen, listen, listen. There is a set of women that will rise in Botswana. I see them holding their children with one of their arms and a sword is in the other hand. They are warriors like Deborah. They are warriors, warriors. The zeal of the Lord will consume them. The infirmity of the carnality of the world will be swallowed up from this nation the next set of apostles the next set of prophets evangelists that would reign over africa the holy ghost will begin to set a fire upon their heads now you will be like the foxes of samson you will begin to run through territories and everywhere you pass a fire will consume a fire will be left behind you holy ghost arrest arrest destinies alter the course of their lives your interest your interest for fame your interest for popularity a spirit swallows it up now you will no longer be carnal something will plant a genuine hunger on your inside it is the holy ghost it is the holy ghost there's a new beauty a new beauty coming for you 
is the beauty of holiness the beauty of holiness the beauty of holiness it is quickening in your spirit the beauty of holiness asking questions holy ghost who am i who am i you don't understand you don't understand a spirit will come upon you now divine direction divine direction divine direction will become the end of this encounter holy ghost touch divine direction please help them help them at the back there Thank you Holy Ghost thank you thank you I'm seeing the comment of people being changed I'm seeing comments being changed I'm seeing a robe of honor being put upon people robe robe of honor robe of honor a comment of honor the shame in your life is out now the shame in your life is swallowed up every situation that brought you shame is swallowed up Holy Ghost touch Shame is consumed. Shame is swallowed. There's a garment of honor coming upon people. There are people here, listen, listen. There are people here under delay. You are going through delay and you have identified it in your life you know that it's not normal something that should take one year is taking 10 years something will happen for everybody except you it will be happening normal until you reach your turn it will stop it's a spirit it's called delay ah there is a name for it they call it the devourer i will restore the years that the canker worm has eaten the palma worm and the caterpillar the spirits that eat time, that eat time out of people's life. I stretch my hands over God's people. At the count of three, I release speed upon you. One, in the name of Jesus. Two, in the name of Jesus. Three, in the name of Jesus. I give you speed now. Upon them now. <laughs> Have you seen where the photographer fell before? You know it's not planned, it's not planned. A spirit is detaining people. Ushers, ushers, please go around. There are people who will start running. They will start running, literally. A spirit is untying their leg. A spirit is untying the ropes and the chain that has held them bound. Holy Ghost, touch, 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 touch. I set you free now. You are loosed. You are loosed. You are loosed. Your feet are loosed. Hear the word of the Lord. I speak to those who are always seeing themselves with attire of the past, always seeing yourself in the visions of the night. 
you are seeing yourself in your primary school you are seeing yourself with shopnika you are still in your primary school you are seeing yourself in a house that you have packed from many years ago you are seeing yourself with classmates that you graduated with many years ago and the spirit world is showing you that you are pegged in your past there is something that is not letting you move something is pegging you to a season in the spirit i stretch my hands over god's people i declare you are delivered from every barrier every limitation everything that resists your motion i set you free now amen amen holy spirit over your sons and your daughters here perform your enterprise do a quick work bring them suddenly into their full potential draw them until their feet stands upon the mountains of ordination i declare every infirmity swallowed up in their members now everything that continues to mock the counsel of god in their life is swallowed up now in the name of jesus christ consecration fire consecration fire from your head to your toe engulf them now holy ghost engulf them engulf them until they become another man in the name of jesus christ amen please ushers help 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 these ones quickly let's do the next the next 20 30 minutes and then we are out of here thank you jesus Please help them, help them, help them. Give me you, everything else can wait. Give me you, I hope I'm not too late. Give me you, everything else must wait. Give me you, I hope I'm not too late. Lord, give me you. Botswana. Just the voices. Help, help this brother up. He has work to do. Serious work. Holy Ghost, a quick work on him. Quick work. When you begin to unveil any dimension of light or revelation, that is the premise for impactation. You don't, you don't begin to declare and release things that people don't know the basis upon which such you know power is delivered we just talked briefly about man's authority and so the manifestation you have witnessed there are people that the holy ghost is drawing into their true 
state of dominion that was their heritage before Satan manipulated the scale. When you live here, especially those who were plagued by addictions, there is a besetting sin that continues to compromise your spiritual stability. Live here, go back to your house and mark my words. You will try to fall by yourself and sin will no longer be interested. It is a spirit. There are things, especially as touching the battle for the soul of a man, there are things that willpower cannot overcome. There are things determination cannot overcome. Resolution cannot overcome. It is a spirit that is quickening that appetite. So another spirit must uproot it. It's a spirit matter. And so this night, there were surgical operations happening here. Jesus was cutting off things that should not even be in your life at the first place. Mark my words. In case you go back and you choose to sin willfully, sin will not be sweet for you again. A spirit has uprooted the appetite. Please be seated. So I was at Romans chapter 6 verse 16 where the Bible says, Know ye not that to whom you yield yourself servant to obey, servant you are to whom you obey. And I said that man lost his authority by obeying another voice contrary to the instructions of God. The moment man obeyed Satan, he became subservient to Satan. And so that was how the whole fall was established. However, if you remember, I already gave you a scripture in Psalm 115 verse 16 which I continue to make reference to that the heavens belongs to the Lord but the earth he has given to the sons of men if you are with me please shout amen, amen. in the light of that truth that the earth has been given to the sons of men it means that man remains the legal occupant of the earth and any spirit that intends to participate in the earth must have to cooperate with man. Listen, you will never find the devil as a spirit. You will find the devil in a human being. You will also never find God in a vacuum. You will find God through, to, through a human being. Both God and Satan must cooperate with man if their desire is to participate in the three-dimensional world. This is why even demons need to seek bodies before they can carry out their merchandise because the valid ticket to, to, be, to legally operate in this space according to the design of God is that you must cooperate with man. See, see, let me give you one illustration. Let's say you were up in the night. In the night when men were sleeping, a spirit gave you unusual strength. Then you stayed up and you carried out some measure of priesthood you were praying you know what priesthood is it's not prayer request it's not give me priesthood is intercessory in nature it's a point where your prayer has gone beyond yourself you are you are trying to bridge the gap between god and an agenda a, a priest a priest has become a bridge in fact in the in the in the olden practice in that ancient practice a priest is the contact between sinful Israel and God. So only a priest can stand on behalf of Israel to bring the counsel of God either through God to them or from them to God. Even when they want to apologize to God, they will rouse the message through the priest. The priest will carry it into the Holy of Holies and then he waits until the Shekinah glory shows up. And listen, when, when even the priest wants to enter the Holy of Holies, they tie a rope on his waist because the the holiness demand of that space it makes that there are many priests that enters and don't come out because if you are not consecrated and you appear before the consuming fire even you who is the MOG you will die and so from time to time while he's carrying out his priestly duties in the holy of holies they will draw the rope three times so when they pull it three times a sign for him to tell them that he's alive he too he will draw it three times then they will know that he, he, he has found mercy 
It's not like this time somebody comes up and say, Thus says the Lord, and the word did not come to pass, and he's still alive. In the time of old, when your prophecy falls to the ground, they stone you to death. The, the people will gather and stone you for because it's a sign that you are an impostor. The criteria was so high. Huh? The purity level was so much. So God, being a spirit, became a victim of his own law. Because the law was the earth he has given to the sons of men. So God cannot enter the earth as at will. He too must cooperate with man. Man must give God a ticket before God enter the earth. I, I know it sounds too, too ambitious, right? Sounds like God, the creator. He honors his word more than his name. Once he has decreed a thing, he becomes bounded by that thing. The moment he gave man the earth, that was the only way Satan can take control over God's own creation. Because God, when he gave man, he has given him. Have you given somebody a gift before? You know it's no longer your own. It's, it's no longer your own. It's not your business whether the person is using it every Sunday. You can't come and meet the person and say, why didn't you wear the shoe that I, I gave you? It's, it's not your own again. You get that was the only ground that Satan could collect dominion because God gave it out already. And on the strength of that, Satan began to use that dominion. Remember, the devil is also a spirit. And so a spirit has manipulated man and he had gotten a ticket into time because man obeyed him. And through that obedience, man opened his vessel to that spirit. I want to read two scriptures for you so that you will know what the current battle in Botswana is and it is the battle in Nigeria it's the battle anywhere you go to it's a clash, a clash of gates it's a war of gates it's gates of hell versus gates of Zion because if any man will allow God enter time remember I used the word allow because we are the occupant the legal owners of the earth and if any spirit must enter time the spirit must first seek a host the first agenda of any spirit that wants to do anything on the earth is to find a vessel. For in a great house, there are many vessels. But God only uses vessels of honor. Remember, I will tell you the mystery in that scripture. It says, if a man can purge himself that one is your own business you are the one to make sure you are you are fit to host the excellency of god it takes consecration for god to pass through you the way the spirit of water huh? the spirit responsible for all shades of lust have many vessels that she uses don't you don't you, some of you don't even know that you are a vessel for that spirit you see that picture that you put on your social media platform that picture that exposed your cleavage and many many randy men are coming to say you are looking hot you are sexy you see these stems they are not kingdom vocabulary ah they don't use those terms for kingdom women sexy you are hot you are not food you can't be hot the person wants to eat you that that statement there is just telling you something guess what satan has done that picture you put there huh listen just stay with me there will be more than 400 young men who will die that day because uh, there's a baby following us there in case you don't know the definition of immorality or fornication or adultery huh? in the lexicon of Zion has been upgraded it is no longer intercourse between a man and a woman it's anybody that looks at another person lustfully he has committed that sin in his heart already so this is where your fornication is happening it is on your social media status anybody that look at you lustfully you have drawn that person into the bed of fornication 
you are the only one that don't know how many people are sleeping with you every day on the ground that the spirit gave you a false inspiration that you should expose the things that are supposed to be covered i found out that the fashion of men continues to give us more style of covering but women is more style of exposing what you call fashionable is that your your clothes keep getting scanty and scanty by the day uh, a time will come a time will come i know people will walk naked <laughs> the way it's going like this people will walk naked one day <laughs> you are an apostle you are just an apostle of darkness in the day of reckoning you will know who you served you will know that the number of souls there is nobody in heaven because of you yet there are myriads of people in hell on the account of your daily choice you think your dressing is your choice everybody is a vessel you don't know how helpless man is man is just a container the spirit that possesses you gives you your identity can i ask you a question did the parent of the madman didn't the parent give him a name huh when you saw the madman did you bother to know his name you know the name you called him madman you know why you called him a madman you were expressing the identity of the spirit that has possessed him that spirit has the capacity to rename him the woman with the issue of blood doesn't she have a name did they ever tell you her name in the bible when infirmity comes upon the person infirmity changes your name into the name of the spirit that comes upon you when 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 devourer when the devourer saps a man's resources what do they call him a poor man <laughs> when any spirit comes upon you your identity is directly proportional to the identity of the spirit that you are hosting you don't have any definition sake for the definition of the spirit that has found expression in your vessel this is why we must carry god when you carry god spirits know that you are a god a time will come spirits will know your name they will say paul i know you don't ha my god says upon this rock i will build my church matthew 16 18 he says and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it what are the gates of hell listen please i need your attention look at me the gates of hell is not a location the gate of hell is not a structure the gates of hell are human beings like me and you they are people that have allowed their life to become a channel through which hell's horde can enter time because spirits don't have the right to enter it a man must give them a ticket and so when you open your life up for any spirit you have become a gate for that spirit the gates of hell are the people that wait at your vulnerable period now a lady wants to write an exam and she needs money to buy form i will tell you who gates of hell are you came with an honest need and say help me with money a gate of hell will say let me sleep with you first what is the interest of the gate of hell he wants to draw your soul into the chambers of hell using any condition possible where are gates of hell they are everywhere in Botswana I saw many of them in the hotel I'm lodged they think that they are the ones doing what they are doing they are vessels of spirits there are spirits that are using them to pull men into hell you don't know you don't know there are evangelists in darkness too every day they go out they win souls there are many souls that will fall every day and they are living that cycle every day more than 70 people will fall you are dressing up a spirit is giving you inspiration oh gates of hell are everywhere guess what it was jesus that said i will build my church and the gates of hell will not prevail say prevail it's a military term it shows that there is war there is a clash of gates prevail means there is a contention at the gates i want to ask you a question because at the end if i only told you about gates of hell it will not be complete 
And so I want to show you something that will be for us a great deliverance. In Psalm 87 verse 2, a very powerful scripture is there contained. The Bible says, the Lord loveth the gates of Zion more than all the dwellings of Jacob. Listen, there are many dwellings of Jacob. The Bible says the favorite place of God is the gate of Zion. Who are the gates of Zion? They are people that have allowed their life to become a portal by which God too can step into time. Let me ask you a question. If God wants to show a person mercy, who would God use to show that mercy? Who? Uh, it's, it's, it's only one woman that understands me. She's the one that knew what I was doing. No matter how you pray, there is nothing that will come from God directly to you. Anything God will give you will come from God through a man to you. Your, your prayer request will be answered still. God designed it this way. God cannot interact directly. He will pass through men. You are praying for prosperity. When your answer of prosperity wants to come, it will come from God through man to you. The question this night is, if God wants to show a person favor, who will become that gate of favor? That anytime God wants to make anybody smile, it is, people can know that you, you, you are, you are the gate of favor. There are people that are gates of power. We are gates of different dimensions of God. There are those who are gates of mercy. Anytime something has gone bad in somebody's life, God begins to orchestrate their parts to link up with that kind of person because there is a dimension of God's mercy that his life has afforded God the space to enter time through there are people who are gates of restoration when Satan damaged things God sent those people to go and reveal that dimension of God I want to ask you one question this night again what are you a gate of You see, the electric cables that you use for this wiring to give you this light, this bulb here, as much as we appreciate their work, we celebrate them for a job well done. There are other cables, other cables that people don't appreciate. They are not inside your house. The one you are celebrating is the wiring cable that they, that they use to wire your house. But there are other cables that are responsible for bringing the power to your city in the first place. They are called high tension cables. A wiring cable cannot do the work of a high tension cable. The kind of current that a high tension cable carries, if a wiring cable tries it, it will burn. It doesn't have the capacity to bear that load. Not everybody can bring every kind of dimension of God into the earth. There are people who are high tension cables. If God wants to bring something that is heavy, it is them that he uses. Because their vessel can bear that load. The capacity to bring something made in into time. When you see high tension cables, you, you, you probably will not see them showing off. Because they are consumed with bodies. They are, they are piping realities from Zion into time. When those things enter, so you, you probably will be clapping now huh, for such a meeting. But it might interest you to know that it will be the prayer of elders like our father here. Elders like some women sitting quietly as silent intercessors. It is the prayer that has made sure that a meeting like this would be possible. The last time I wanted to come to Botswana, you don't know, you don't know how many ways Satan can stop things. It is too easy. He has people in everywhere. There are the system in the cosmos it takes high tension cables to allow God into time and if God wants to move in a territory he begins to look for a man that can stand in the gap ah, in Ezekiel he says I sought for a man who can stand in which gap the void between heaven and earth we need a person who can be a bridge I'm speaking to those that a spirit of prayer will come upon them this night. And you will stop praying for yourself. You will begin to carry Botswana as a body. Ah! You know
know how territories are allocated to men? I, I know you will not answer me. If you like, go and go and print posters. Eh? Print posters. Put your picture on billboards all over the city. The city will not answer you yet. He said, You think there is any empty space in the world? Every space has a leader. There is a principal spirit that rules every space. You cannot show up one day and say, You now, you reign in this place. Jesus, reign. Jesus will not reign like that. People go and gather money and buy instruments. They go and rent hall, sir. And they have not secured a space spiritually. They have rented a hall physically. Then they go and start church. And then they are waiting for people to come to that space. When spirits can raise roadblocks and say, Ah. Why, why do you want to start a family and you have not bought land? Eh? How did you even start your business and you didn't buy land? There is nothing you will build in this kingdom that you will not first secure land officially. You know how you buy land? Huh? You use priesthood, prayer. You pray. Listen. You pray and you journey to the foundation of the city and write your name on it. In the day where principal spirits show up, and they begin to question what you are building because what they will demand is your paper let's see your c of o let's see whether you secured land officially before you started building this family this is why if if you like do do a colorful wedding you say you shut down Botswana, that you paint the city red and blue your wedding your wedding will break easily if spirits come and find out you didn't buy land how did you start that business how did you even start church and you did not buy land i'm not talking physically buying land you pray you pray you pray you pray until your prayer stay in that environment then spirits now give a verdict that avoid this space it belongs to this man you know what this thing does for you when you begin to pray those kind of prayer those intercessory mode of prayer you just stay on your own people are sleeping everybody is just having fun and pleasure you get up in the night devote another one hour Hama kakaparatia your spirit say what are you asking god for you say i'm not asking i'm not asking for anything the Holy Ghost also asks you, what do you want me to do for you? You say, nothing. I don't want... A... <laughs> Guess what? <laughs> you who is always praying, always investing in prayer, always praying, you get up tomorrow and say, Lord, over Botswana, your kingdom come, your will be done. Because the day as it is in our day now when they will begin to allocate territories to men many angels and spirits will gather then they will begin to deliberate on who should get this particular jurisdiction guess what their answer will be they will say give it to the man that has carried the body for that space all along they will now find out that People have gone to print posters and banner, big billboard. They are trying to use canal means to do spiritual work. And then they put all kinds of title. And then there is one silent intercessor somewhere. Just investing in prayer, buying land, buying land, buying land. He gets up. They are 10 years ahead of him because they have run into ministry 10 years. But they didn't buy land. The man who took time to buy land. The day he steps out of the secret place like this when he rouse a city gathers immediately you know why the city belongs to him he bought it in the world of spirits don't don't do anything without prayer don't don't build anything that prayer has not gone ahead of you for ah 
I've seen marriages that still break after 40 years. All the effort to keep it. Listen. Anything our Heavenly Father did not plant, it will be uprooted. It is easy for spirits to manipulate the skin. By land, by land. There are those of us who are currently, this night, that this one I'm telling you, what will come upon you is the spirit of prayer. The capacity to tarry. You just tarry with God. Somebody will cry for Botswana this night. And there are people here you know. The work on your life is bigger than Botswana. It's bigger than Botswana. You will become the voice of God to the nations. So your, your, own, your own labor is not small. You know what I told you? Those who go far, a spirit must give them food. <laughs> you can't work on this, your energy. They will wake you up and say, it's, it's the journey ahead. is far. What is Satan shaking in your life? What is he shaking? Maybe he will now take the burden that this particular conference has vested upon your soul. Carry this burden now. That thing that is shaking, eh? they are shaking it because we don't have official paper yet. Eh? <laughs> Do your paper this night and it is with prayer. <laughs> Refuse to be a victim. There is a way this thing works. Refuse to be at the receiving end. You pray until you first become a mayor. What it means is that they say, okay, from this, from this side like this, you are the one that controls it. Refuse to still be, be, be satisfied. Don't rest until the whole land is stained with your prayer. You know what happens? Prayer can be stored. Prayer can be stored the way a reservoir stores water. You can pray to an extent that you now carry your prayer, your prayer enterprise with you. So you enter a space and, and it is the structure of your prayer that enters that space. A time will come, you will, not, you will not need to enter a space and start praying long again. The prayer quorum you carry can buy any space if you enter. As you enter, you are asking, how much is this land? That is what your prayer life is doing. How much is this space? <laughs> is your business shaking? Buy the land that the business is on this night. Family, your marriage, buy the land of that marriage. Buy it in priesthood. Anything you buy and you secure, no spirit can play around that space. It becomes private property. Demons cannot wander and just stroll and enter again. Is touch not my anointed, do my prophets no harm. Buy the land. Are you ready to pray? You know, there are a lot of people, the only thing they want, they are looking for who will pray for them. And so they continue to text people from north, south, east, and west and say, Please don't forget me in your prayers. Guess what? Bible says and he gave another parable to this end. Men ought always to pray. Men, men. You that you are not praying, you are not a man. They, they, don't, they don't know who you are. Mind you, the person you are texting and say pray for me. Once upon a time, he too, he was born in a hospital like you. He was once a baby naked like you. Now you need to talk to God through him. What happened to him that cannot happen to you? Let's be on our feet quickly. Hold the hands of somebody by your side. I would have loved to give you a prayer point, but if I give you a prayer point, I would, I would deflate your body. There is something in your soul. Turn that thing to your prayer now before we take one prayer point and go. Convert the body in your soul. Turn it into your prayer point and begin to press wherever you are. There is something the Holy Ghost is doing in your heart. Turn that thing to a prayer point. Quickly, wherever you are. Is this how much? Is this how much you intend to reign? Refuse 
refuse to be small, refuse to be little. Thailand. Pahataka. Rahata parateke parada. Shepa teke 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 ba. Ma ba 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 ba. Shaba shaba. Rahado mane. Irwa. Shepa teke te. Shaka teke 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 ba kada. Shaba ba 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 ba. Rahata teke teke teke. Rahata teke teke teke. Ma ba 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 ba. Shaka teke 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 ba. Shaba teke teke ba. Ma ba 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 ba. Ah. Thailand. Thailand. Wherever the sole of my feet treads, I possess, I possess, I possess. Ra, ra. Don't just be quiet. You are a ruler. You are a ruler. So ray, ray. Over my family. Over my marriage. I declare. No darkness can reign. No darkness can prosper. You reign on high. 
spirits, a new wine, a new wine. People will become drunk now. They will become drunk. They will become drunk and intoxicated by the wine of the spirits. They will run on that economy and they will ignore the lust of the world because they are drunk. They are drunk with the wine. Holy Ghost, serve, serve that wine, serve that wine. Give them wine, give them wine. Give them wine. Have you seen burning wine? Have you seen fiery wine? Have you seen wine of fire? They are serving wine. They are serving fiery wine. There is fiery wine though. You are drinking fire. There is fire. You are drinking fire.
there's new wine, there's new wine, there's new wine in this place. New wine, new wine, new wine. You can't control yourself. You can't ignore him. You can't resist him. You can't shun him. He has quickened something on your inside. It's new wine, new wine, new wine. There are people that are getting intoxicated. They are getting intoxicated at the back there. Your eye, your eye will not contemplate on lust anymore. come upon now over 11 of them 11 11 of them the power of God please help them at the back there the power of God is coming upon them and is changing them into another man is a power of transformation it is changing them you you will get up and start learning yourself you don't know yourself you will start understanding new things about your your life abilities you have never worked in before Holy Ghost Holy Ghost, Holy Ghost, be jealous, be jealous about your own, be jealous, go and look for them, touch them wherever they are, don't let them go, be jealous, be jealous about your own, claim them this night, claim them, touch them, touch them, touch them, oh Holy Ghost, please help them. is laying it in your heart to remain in this hall and pray and pray through the night if God is arranging your heart and say wait here and touch something with me don't let this conference go until I have given you something look for some brothers like you and wait in this hall and carry and pray God must do something for you that you will continue to remember this conference for See what the Holy Ghost does. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. 